So today's song, welcome to Facebook Live Wednesday. I want to open it with this song by War. Anyone familiar with this song? Why can't we be friends? So why shouldn't you be your child's friends? Today's Facebook Live Wednesday talks about what role should a parent play in order to raise resilient, respectful, and responsible adults. So these are the four roles. And I've talked about parenting styles before, but I thought it would be really um, important to share how your role does affect the kind of adult your child might become. So the first one, and I, this was brought up to my attention when a, one of my clients, um, her ex-husband feels that parents should be their best friend, right? So that means you share um, everything, you're like partners in crime. You basically are their friend, like a peer. Second one is parole officer slash dictator. You do as I say, if you don't follow the rules, then you're out of here, the older they get. Or I'm just not going to tolerate it. You give extreme um, disciplinary actions, right? And you just pretty much are a dictator. The third parenting tip is full freedom, which sometimes could be construed as neglect, but there is no supervision. You do your thing, they do their thing. So there's a lot of freedom on their part. And lastly, there's the authoritative, which isn't to be confused with authoritarian. So the authoritative parent is responsive to their child's needs, yet they really set limits, boundaries, and they make sure that rules are enforced. I'm relying on notes today because there's a lot that I want to say in a short period of time. So which role would your child benefit from? Well, adults who have been raised with authoritative parenting end up being more independent, more self-reliant, academically successful, they're well-behaved, and they're less likely to choose antisocial behavior such as drug use. They'll be less inclined to experience anxiety, depression, and mental illness or just not able to handle life's challenges. So another thing that I came across are things that parents should never ever do, and I'm guilty for doing some of these. I think any parent who has emotions, which we all do, tend to say things or do things when our buttons are pushed. So these are the things that we are supposed to never do. Never is a strong word, so we're all most likely going to engage in these behaviors. So forgive ourselves, know that we're human, apologize for those behaviors. Hey, it's Terry Lynn. Yes, so um, talking about things that we should never say to our kids, no matter how old they are, okay? Do as I say or else. Very, very authoritarian. Um, uh, so not authoritative, it's authoritarian. Let's just call it the dictatorship slash parole officer. You better do it. Don't ask questions because that's what I said so, right? I say what I say goes, or you just suffer very severe punishments. Or you only notice when they do wrong, right? Why did you do that? Oh my gosh, what were you thinking? Are you even using your brain today? Come on, just focus. Can I hear these, this so many times during my virtual tutoring. Can you just focus? Are you taking notes? Are you listening to what Miss Karen said? Um, what's going on? Hi, Karen from Arizona. She's my Dotson intoxicated, right, wiener group, my Facebook group. I'm totally into Dotsons. Thank you for joining. Um, just stop wasting my time. I have things to do, right? A lot of parents end up saying that. I have things to do. I have my own agenda, and you are just causing me to just stress out because of what you're doing. So a lot of blame, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt because you have your stuff to do and you just can't tolerate um, them not doing what they're supposed to do, basically. 
Oh my gosh, Felice from Oregon, another Dotson lover. Thank you for joining, Felice. And the famous line, how many of us have said, do you know how many times I've told you to fill in the blank? I think that one is just something that is in our DNA because when we get pushed and you've reminded your child, you reminded your teen multiple, multiple times and you don't know what else to say, so for the 17th time when you say, um, you know, I told you to do, I don't know, the dishes, sometimes homework, cleaning your room, whatever it is, you are just up to here. You're tired. You're hungry. You're stressed. You lose it. We've all been there. Oh, and then the last thing, okay, that all of us, I think, especially high achievers, as parents, if you're high achievers, don't butt in and do projects, homework. I've been there. I edit maybe too much. So there's a difference between guiding your child academically or doing the work. I have many parents just do the work. I know um, my husband has been guilty of this and me too. His is more with the DNA model and trying to make it perfect. Even with gingerbread houses, whatever it is, his need to just have things, right? Exactly the way the right way and then me it's with solving algebraic equations or editing an assignment if I think a stronger adjective should be used I sometimes instead of guiding her I would say something like well what about a stronger adjective like and I, I, I would just give it especially if it's 11 at night I'm tired and you end up doing the easy route right so my whole point of this Facebook Live today and the parenting roles is what role does what? If you are authoritarian, right, then you exert control through power. You exert control, your power over them. So they know who's the boss. They know what your expe expectations are. And if they don't do it, then it's a lot of, you know, oh my gosh, you are such a disappointment. Maybe not saying those words. Maybe saying them, but you are literally, if your child is near to tears or they're looking down, then they're giving you a sign that what you're saying is not very positive. There's a difference between setting um, boundaries and giving consequences. I was just sharing with my 24-year-old, what is one thing that, um, was, I, was I ever a dictator? was, you know, were dad and I ever very strong, powerful dictators? And she thought about it and said, well, that one time when you didn't give, um, let me go to the Halloween um, house with um, a boy. She was about 16. And the rule was that if she ever went out, we would have to meet the boy. Well, he gave, this boy gave her like an hour notice and said, hey, you want to go to the haunted house plantation? Um, when? Oh, in like two hours. And I said, no, we both said, you do understand, right, that we need to meet his parents. We said that. And she was livid. She could not understand why. And I asked her, do you understand why now? I know it's been, you know, like six years later. And she thought about it. And she said, yeah, but I remember being really, really upset. So setting boundaries and giving consequences are very different than the dictator role where you tell them, right? This is the way it is. Don't even ask why. It's just the way it is because I'm the parent and you're the child. That is from a dictator standpoint because you are saying without any explanation. The authoritative parent would explain why, right? You are not allowed to fill in the blank because of our fear that something might happen. We don't trust the person, the situation, so... For example, like a, a four-year-old, they have the cognition to understand, right, certain things. You need to put your seatbelt on. I don't want to put my seatbelt on. Well, you need to because, number one, if a police officer stops me, mom's going to get a really big, big ticket, right, a very expensive ticket. Plus, I'm going to have to go to classes to teach mom how to be a responsible parent to make sure that you put your seatbelt on, which means I'm going to be taken away to go to classes, which means I won't be there for you. So just put your seatbelt on because it's very dangerous. If you don't have enough time for the full explanation, explain. I don't want to get into a car accident and I care for your safety. 
children know um, and will accept. I under, I, I've been telling kids, this is such a stupid assignment. I get it. I understand. Do you want to graduate? Yes. Well, then we're going to have to do this stupid assignment. Will you ever use this in life? No. You will probably not need to use the Pythagorean theorem for math. You will probably never have to um, know the difference, right, between um, whatever grammar rules. But sometimes it does help if you're writing, if you're speaking, you want to sound semi-intelligent, right? Sometimes they don't care. I don't care if people think I'm stupid. Okay, but what works is if they care about graduating and if they want to go to college, right? Then if you want to pass the eighth grade, you want to pass the fifth grade, guess what? You have to do what you consider stupid. So you get on their level, you totally relate to them. And then they understand. And I always say, I don't make the assignments. I don't even make the graduation requirements. I just help students pass. I might not help them like math, but I'll help them pass math if they follow. I don't enforce it. If you want to follow what um, you know, I teach, if you don't understand, let me know. But I'm here as your tutor, not as your best friend, but as your tutor and your almost like a support system, offer support. Okay, so that's authoritative. Authoritarian, right? Authoritative, I'm sorry, teach guide, set consistent boundaries, right? And you carry out um, discipline that's not overly like considered harsh punishment, but you do give them consequences. Best friends route, um, sometimes you manipulate in a way, but you know what I just realized yesterday? If you consider being a best friend is a good parenting role, then that, then if you're a best friend that spanks your child, slaps your child, and does the corporal punishment route, then that's not a best friend, right? Because as a best friend, would you slap your best friend? That best friend would probably unfriend you on Facebook and probably not want to talk to you because best friends don't do that. So when you think about it, parents who want to be best friends, they don't like to see their uh, children angry, sad. They want to bond with their kid because the mindset is if I'm their friend they will cooperate and listen but what happens is that if you're their friend they will want you to be at their level so they don't respect you sometimes they won't even listen to you because you're their friend you are not setting boundaries you are not being consistent in what a parent is supposed to do and as a parent what should we do well, besides keeping your kids safe, providing shelter, food, you know, the essentials, you are there to guide them so that they end up becoming resilient, responsible, respectful adults. Emphasis on independent. If you are charging your child's cell phone, if you are dropping off their hydro flask at school, I I noticed some kids being dropped off at school and I thought, you know, I wonder how many kids forgot something and I wonder how many parents will say, you know, they get that text, mom, I forgot my fill in the blank. And some schools will allow you to drop it off at the office and then the office will deliver it to the child. Well, I'm going to let you know just my belief system and what I've learned over the past 24 years is if you continue to do that, they will rely on you saving them. Yes, whether it's a forgotten water bottle, whether it's money that um, they didn't save, maybe they're a working 18-year-old um, and they spent all their money and so now they can't buy, say, lunch or they can't pay for gas. And they say, Mom, I don't have money. And you say, well, how much money do you need? And that's where it's really hard to practice what needs to be done to raise a resilient, independent child. As an only child, I confess, um, I remember on my honeymoon, my first honeymoon, um, I called my mom. She always said, I'll, I'll pay half, you know, pay half for karate lessons, pay half for ballet lessons, pay half for whatever thing that I wanted. So I said, hey, mommy, I found some really cute earrings. You want to half them? 
And she's like, sure, how much are they? I don't know, $60. You want to pay $30? Okay. Was she, was she going to wear them? No. But I was trained to expect my parents to pay half. And then my mom, I was just telling Chelsea, when my mom um, had Alzheimer's, you know, the karate money stopped, the ballet money stopped. And I realized then, oh my gosh, they enabled me. Because part of me wanted to say, well, wait a minute, you mean you're not going to pay half of the violin and the ballet and the, um, you know, whatever it was. And that's when I realized, okay, it is up to me to break the cycle. And when Sabrina was born, I knew that the most important thing I was going to do was not be their friend. My dad did not like to see his grandchildren upset or sad. So he would do anything in their power to just make them happy. As a grandparent, I think it's okay. But as a parent, you are going to do a lot of enabling if you don't like to see your kids upset or sad. None of us likes to see our children sad. When they're crying, when they're frustrated, I think we have to remind ourselves it is not our responsibility to help our child feel better. Sometimes it's different. They have a boo-boo, you offer the Band-Aid. You know, they're frustrated, you offer support, but not fixing their problem, which is hard, right? It is very hard because sometimes it might lead to failing a class, losing a job, um, just something that you would not want for your child. But in order for us to build resiliency, we need to allow our kids to fail without judgment. We don't, don't say that, I told you so. If you only listened to me, you wouldn't have got the traffic ticket. You wouldn't have you know, been called out in class because just listen, I know better than the child hears that you don't trust them, that they are incompetent and they will never meet up to meet your expectations. And I hear children say that to me. My students over the past 21 years have said, my parents are always nagging me. They don't trust me. Um, and I had this one, um, she was 13. And I said, you show your dad that you got an A? And she goes, it's not gonna matter. I go, what do you mean? He'll be proud of you and you should be proud of yourself. So the father walks in and I go, um, you know, your daughter got an A. And he looked at her and said, so who did you copy from? And she looks at me like, see, I told you so. And I was speechless. So these kids are being emotionally damaged by what we say and what we do. And having the opposite end, you know, you can be this very strong um, parole officer slash dictator. And then the opposite is giving too much freedom. I have a classmate who said, um, you know, when my child is 18, when I have a hard day at work, you know, I know it's in the safety of my home. So we share a bottle of wine and we talk story. And I just thought, hmm. So that's, you know, no judgment. But if you're going to drink with your child when they are not of legal drinking age, what message are you sending? You know, I know that some people say, well, it's in the safety of my home. So at least I can monitor and I can just teach them about, I don't know, how to drink um, in a safe environment. So borderline too much freedom and best friend. A very lethal combination, I think, because you are raising your child to break the rules under your supervision. And it very it gives them a very confused message, right? Because your child knows the rules, but you're breaking them. So what's the message that you're receiving? So what I wanted to do is just, you know, oh my goodness, you know what's funny? It's the, um, why can't we be friends? But the lyric that popped up said, I really remembered when you drank my wine. Is that weird? Right when I mentioned a mom drinking wine with her um, 18 year old. But the message is truly, the parenting role that you decide to play will have an impact on the type of adult that you raise. And you won't know this. You won't know this until your child becomes an adult. 
sometimes you won't know it until you're in heaven, right? Because you'll look down and say, wow, I did a really good job. Or let's just read Terry Lynn's comment. Thank you, Karen, for your words. As a mom that is in this storm now, I have to keep reminding myself that my child's grades does not dictate what kind of parent I am. For all the people out there, wait, let me just click this. Um, for all the people reading this and listening to Karen, really marinate what she's saying. Hey, Corrine, hi. Wow, marinate what I'm saying. I like that adjective, I like that verb, marinate. Yes, I'm just, I'm not telling you what to do. As a parent coach, I never tell parents what to do, but I guide them and I tell them, you know, just sharing my 24 years. I know some parents out there have had decades more experience, but as a, a educator, as a parent, as a parent coach, I've done, and this is my mission, to research and really learn from these parent studies, you know, from um, just psychologists. I'm going to be interviewing a family therapist who um, really shared what she sees the role of parents and the type of, um, she might consider them mistakes, but what we do and how it impacts the kind of adult that we're raising. And sometimes the best thing that you think you're doing, like I emphasized academics. Terry, I totally get um, caring about your child's grades and feeling just mortified when you see uh, an F. I was like, what? As an educator, I'm failing as an educator, plus I'm failing as a parent. It caused me to sink into a two-year depression. And what came out of it was mama's got to let go. You know, how to let go without losing your sanity. Does it mean that you will let go forever? No. As a parent, we sign up to sometimes lose our sanity. But my goal and mission is to help you during the storms when you feel like you're about to lose it. So I invite you to um, join my um, mama support group. And um, I would love to have five to 10 moms. We'll just meet monthly or maybe text each other, support each other during those storms because it's during those storms and I've been there. The past couple days, I was in torrential rain, tornadoes, I mean, every natural disaster. And I thought I almost quit my parent coaching journey because I thought that I was failing until I realized, you know what? I'm taking on my child's responsibility and her journey. If your child is making poor choices, I'm going to repeat this. It is not on your shoulders. It is not your, um, you know, it does not reflect your parenting success or lack of. It doesn't make you a parent that you should be ashamed of being. It does not give you an F in Parenting 101. It just shows you that as a parent, you have to let go of the story that you tell yourself. You're not letting go and saying, you know what? I don't give a crap about grades. You're saying to your child, you know, I'm going to let go because I trust that you will figure it out. I trust that no matter, you know, what you what your grades are, what you decide to do or not do, you've got this without me hovering over your shoulders. And I know that mom's been somewhat of a helicopter parent. If they don't know what that is, describe it. I've been trying to involve myself a bit too much, and I want to let you know that I love you. I love you so much that I'm going to let go of telling you what to do, telling you how to do it, and really doing too much guiding because I've realized and we what we consider guiding is sometimes telling them exactly what to do the way that we want it done. Sometimes, guess what? we have zero control over our children, right? If you tell a child not to drink until they're 21, how many of these 18 year olds are going to listen and not drink? Think about that. If you tell your, told your child not, not to cheat, but they know that getting an A is important, 
So they do everything in their power to get an A because they are struggling. And what's important in their mind is to get an A because if they get an F, maybe their phone will be taken away, maybe their video games will be taken away. So they're, in their mind, getting an A is more important than being honest or not cheating because they know the consequences of getting an A, right? So the stress of performing, whether they're four or 14 or 24, it's such a huge burden on their shoulders. We think we have it stressful as a parent. Think about the stress. Hey, cats, in Las Vegas, um, think about the stress that your child has and how they feel when they know that they've disappointed you, right? Think about how you felt when you disappointed your parents um, as a teen. I'm gonna end with a story that shows you, I mean, I, I was just surprised at how my uncle in Japan reacted when his daughter, my cousin was I think in her early 30s and she was smoking um, and she wasn't paying attention and she burned their entire house down. Their entire house was just destroyed. Hey, um, thank you. She's, um, Kat says that she has a few minutes. I appreciate you just um, joining in for a few minutes. Um, yeah, so this story is very powerful, guys, because my cousin burned their house down, okay, in Japan, and my uncle did not lecture her. My uncle did not say, what the hell were you thinking of smoking and not monitoring your ashes or just the fact that you could burn down the house, which you did. Now we have to build a brand new house. But my cousin felt immense guilt and she blamed herself and she felt horrible. So last night, um, Chelsea uh, spilled the seven layer dip or whatever it was. She, she actually dropped it. And she was like, oh my gosh, mom, dad didn't have any of the dip. He bought the dip. Now the dip is destroyed. I am just, I'm just so stupid. And so I said, it's perspective. You know when a child is feeling like they failed and maybe they have failed, give them perspective instead of saying, you know, are you, do you want to pass? You're getting an F in four classes or whatever it is. You're getting an F. You might not pass whatever grade you're in. So what do you say? Well, what's done is done. If they got an F, they got an F. If the bean dip dropped, the bean dip dropped. But you know what? I told her, Chelsea, you not you did not burn the house down. You did not um, do something so catastrophic. Yes, it's sad, but it's just bean dip. So parents, they're just grades. Very hard to say. But grades do not define their future success. Um, so that's it for today. Um, if you want to join my mama support group, please message me. Um, and if you want me to offer some coaching, um, please uh, arrange a 30 minute comp call and let us let us talk about brainstorm what's going on in your storm and how we can come up with um, any kind of strategies or tools so that you can build resilient, responsible, and respectful adults. Because all of us, that's all we want, is to build, right? We want to create children who are independent, who know how to file their taxes on time, who can keep a job, who know, who know how to ace an interview, and to also deal with the disappointments, the failures, the failed relationships they'll have the possible jobs they'll lose. Because if, you're, if you don't prepare them for the losses, they will have mental breakdowns and they will not know how to function. And that to me is something that I think every parent fails um, or fears, right? We fear that our kids will turn into adult failures. And you don't, okay, I'm gonna end real quick. I know this is like too long, but one child who's 10 said, my mom said that if I don't get straight A's, I might end up homeless. I was like, what? So I have to get straight A's. I got a B, which means I might be homeless one day. And I was, I didn't know what to say. She was like, Miss Karen, you don't know what it's like having a mom from Korea. Asian moms are so different. They expect perfection. So I'm sorry, grades mean my life. 
think about that, marinate, like Terry Lynn said, and um, I will see you next Wednesday. I am currently editing my um, book, 100 Parenting Tips Inspired by the Pandemic, which should be released, I'm going to say, hopefully around my mom's birthday next year, February 25th, her 90th birthday. So thank you again. Sorry for making this long. I end up just talking and talking and sharing, but I hope you gained a little bit, uh, a nugget of uh, wisdom on what parenting role you should play in your child's life, no matter how old they are. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.